A Floss Tube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. Welcome to my channel. I'm very happy you're here, and I plan to share with you what I've been up to with my cross stitch this past week to show you a finished piece, a soon-to-be FFO, a little bit of stash, and a couple little stitch goodies that I received in the mail today. So last year, at the end of last year, I finished up this piece, and this is Birds and Berries by JBW Designs. And I bought had bought it some, some, some years ago, but when red samplers become the rule, that there always needed to be one on the go, I pulled this one back out. It was a whip and decided to give it a finish. And I used the DMC 115 to finish it up. And it's just been laying on my stack of finished items that I've not yet fully finished. So I was shopping in Hobby Lobby about two weeks ago. And all of us that frequent Hobby Lobby knows about that corner. There's always a corner of the store where they have several different clearance items for one, one reason or another, discontinued items or um, something that might be slightly damaged or those kind of things, but they oftentimes will have frames, sometimes with glass, sometimes without. And I picked up this frame and it did have a back. I picked it up for like $2.50 and this piece will fit in it perfectly. It was white, as you can see here, and it was more of a, of a barn wood, not barn wood, but like a farmhouse white. It looked to be a little weathered. It kind of needed to be sanded a little bit. So all I did with it was gave it one little coat of my Brie Wax. And then you can see by the sheen, I rubbed that in really good. But I was careful if you look close enough, like in here, I didn't fully saturate uh, the, the piece of wood with the Brie Wax so that that white could show through. Since this piece is white, I did also cut out the piece, a piece of foam core board. I keep that on hand here at the house for when I do frame pieces and I cut it to fit this, of course. And so this is what it'll look like. And I was kind of torn at the beginning um, because it's a white fabric and it's kind of a stark white fabric. I went back and forth this weekend whether I wanted to try to tea or coffee dye uh, this finished piece or whether I wanted to paint the frame red and use the Brie Wax. And I decided to use it like this. I think it's gonna be fine. I'm still kind of torn about the tea dyeing. Um, but my mom says that it looks fine just as it is. And you know, mom's always right, so I'm gonna listen. I had the whole family over for dinner yesterday. Um, as I've shared in several of my videos, my middle daughter, Chelsea, uh, is married to a US Marine and they have been in California for a couple of years. And they, she recently came home because he will be getting out of the Marine Corps. Um, and it's been so great to have them home. He actually come home a week or so ago. He's not fully out of the, the core yet, but um, he is home and it's been just, my, my dining room table is bursting at the seams every, every weekend. Um, I enjoy cooking. I enjoy the happy chaos of my house being full of family. It brings me a lot of joy. And so with that, I didn't film yesterday. I had a house full and I'm, uh, even though I'm, I miss being here with all of you, there's six other days of the week and yesterday was taken up by family and family comes first and all things family comes first. I know all of you will agree, but um, it's just been great having my kids or at least two of them because Jacob is still in Italy, but having them with me every weekend, sitting around the dining room table, swapping tails, um, teasing one another, playing cards. It's been wonderful, wonderful. So um, anyway, so my stitching has suffered a little over the past few weeks since Chelsea's been home. Perfectly okay with that. Um, she also likes to craft, not cross stitch, but craft. So we've been doing door hangers. Uh, we tried diamond painting. Um, we did some pour painting this past weekend. And it's it's all been fun because 
it's just a way, just like cross stitch, for to, uh, us to express ourselves um, through some type of crafting medium. So I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. So let's jump back to the stitching. With all that being said, I picked up a couple of new charts. Um, they came in the mail actually last week, and I forgot to show them on my last video. But this is Threadworks Primitives Beggar's Night. <clears throat> and I'm ready for fall. Um, the temperatures here have been 97, 98, 99 degrees without the heat index. With it, we've been running about 107, 106, 105. So I'm looking forward to cooler weather. Um, here in South Carolina, we may have two weeks, tops three of actual really cold temperatures in a winter. Um, but fall does at least get into the 80s, so I'm very happy with that and I'm looking forward to it. But that's Beggar's Night. And so I got these because I'm looking forward to fall. And I also picked up this Scarlet House piece and this is Pumpkins and Bittersweet. Pumpkins and Bittersweet. I love the colors in this piece. Those oranges and those yellows. But fall colors have always been right up my alley, so par for the course. Don't know when I'll stitch them. If I had to choose between these two of which one I would start first, it would be this one. This past week, the only thing that I have stitched on is the fall by Barbara Anna Designs. I stayed up way late last night to make that finish, so I want to share it with you. I am very excited with this finish. That cow was a booger bear. But here's the fall by Barbara Anna Designs. <laughs> so there are a few unintentional changes in there. Um, I'd point them out to you. I know where they are, but I'm not going to. <laughs> you may be able to pick them out if you have stitched the piece or currently stitching it. But my favorite element of this, or elements, as I love the creation story, but I love this full coverage area of the sky. That is actually what drew it to, drew, drew me to this piece. I usually go for um, symmetrical pieces, and this one's a little change for me um, outside of my norm, but I, I'm glad I busted out of those borders and tried something new uh, because I do, I just enjoyed it. And even though I did make little slight mistakes in a few places in there while stitching it, because it's not a symmetrical piece, it is not noticeable at all. You would have to have stitched it to even pick them out, and then you would really have to scrutinize it really closely to find the mistakes that I made. The second favorite portion of this for me is going to be the cow. I, I thought the horse was a booger to stitch, but that cow uh, took me three nights of stitching. So Friday night, um, I did not participate in my Friendship Friday and work on Cooper. So I owe Cooper two nights this week, but I did not stitch on Cooper. I stitched just on this cow. So I got him outlined in a little bit of the white in his face on Friday. Saturday, I concentrated. Um, there were three or four, the, um, the birds beneath the cow. I finished those up Saturday. And then there are, there's like a cat and a small potted plant on top of the cow's back. And then the one to the right of that it looks like a, a daisy, a dried daisy. I finished those up too. So on Sunday, it was all cow. And I was determined I was not going to stitch another day on that cow. So I got up early Sunday morning before everyone come over, got breakfast cooked, got it cleaned up for bre from breakfast, prepped all the things for dinner, and I sat down and stitched for about an hour and a half. It may have been two hours because... If it's, if I just get lost in time when I'm stitching, 
I, I'll look at my clock in or my watch or my phone and it says it's you know seven o'clock and the next thing I know it's 10 or 10 15 I just I really lose track of time because I become so focused in my stitching but um, I, I stayed up till about 12 15 last night after everyone left and I got dinner cleaned up and got the house straightened up, I come up back up to stitch and I finished up that cow. One of the unintentional accidents in the stitching is the hill beneath Adam and Eve in the Tree of Knowledge. And I had there to be stitched in Smyrna crosses and I had cross stitched all of it. Read the pattern, Lori. <laughs> in the pattern. So I had stitched it wrong and a kind um, cross stitcher was just questioning me on it because she had disliked those Smyrna crosses and she liked that I had cross stitched it and I had intended on outlining it to make it stick out a little better and I, I decided not to. But that was just a happy a accident. I definitely was not pulling it out because this is one strand over two linen threads on 40 count. I'm not pulling all that, <laughs> that out. That ain't, that's not happening. <laughs> the only other change I made was in the, the box here. This, I do not believe it to be a reproduction sampler because the, what do you call this? On an Egyptian pyramid, it would be the cartouche, but on the name and date, um, it had, unless this was one of Barbara Anna's relatives, it is not a reproduction sampler because it used some of the same name that she has signed the bottom of the pattern with, same elements of the name. So, because this was my leap year 2020 start, I put leap year. And because this is not a symmetrical piece, I did not try to um, center anything, but I put my initials and then I put the year 2020. I know there's a lot more going on right now than leap year, but like I've heard others say, it's been a rough year for many of us. Um, a very odd and unusual year and I just I don't want to commemorate it in that way um, not that I can forget it because I can't um, because we're still in the midst of it as well but I didn't want to commemorate it and I just thought it would be a great thing to commemorate that I started this with several of my stitch friends on Instagram as my leap year 2020 start so once again Barbara Anna, the fall sampler. Love it. Today I got in a little box um, I ordered from the wool, um, Woolen Willow, under the Woolen Willow. She has an Etsy shop. This was a cute little thank you card that was in the box and it come with a little um, paper clip with a, a woolen penny on it and I saw these on um, pumpkin hollow quilts can't think of her name I can picture her I'm sorry <laughs> I can't think of her name anyway I want to show you what I got so she showed one of these on her Instagram page and it's a chenille um, strawberry and I loved it how many of us slept up beneath a bedspread like that that was made out of this I know I did and it was blue powder blue but I love this I love the little strawberry topper she finished it off with a thin piece of jute twine and a little um, stem but my favorite part and it was packaged. I want you to see. Let me try to put it back in here a little bit. The way that it was, I was received it, it was packaged so very cute. The thank you note was on top. And then when I opened the box, it was in tissue paper. And there's a thank you sticker on the paper as well. So such sweet finishing. And it's the, the little small touches 
um, that makes things special as well a lot of times when you receive them in the mail. So I was very appreciative of the time that this person, this this um, crafter took with this piece because um, I do appreciate it very much. But here is my tomato. Everything this year seems to be about tomatoes. And so there's this little, you can use it as a counting pen um, or it's just a little decoration. So it's got a little a little snap button there and um, it looks like a piece of red wool. Is it checkered? No, just a red wool. And then you've got this cloth tomato and it has a woolen top. And so she's done a buttonhole stitch around the edges and some satin stitches to make it look like the leaves and the little wooden button in the center and again on the bottom. And I love it. So is this a cute um, collectible antique? No, it's not. It's a new modern, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And then at the same time, I'm supporting a little, a little small business, which is also important right now. So once again, this is under the wooden, wooden, under the woolen willow. And I will link the Etsy, Etsy shop below so you can take a look. She's got several other items um, you may want to take a look at. So hopefully I've enabled you a little bit. So tonight, now that I have the big finish and um, my next stop with that finish is going to be at the Framers because originally my plans were to have that framed and have it entered into the state fair but i got an email about two weeks ago that stated they're not going to do exhibits at the south carolina state fair this year which made me a little bit sad but i understand and i would rather we kept each other safe so i have um i'll probably enter it in next year um the rules for the state do say that i think it has to be stitched within the previous three years so we'll be good with that so I can enter it in next year and so my plans for this evening is I may pick up Cooper because I owe him two or actually this week will owe him two nights so I usually stitch on my um, friendship Friday stitch along of course on Friday and I missed this past Friday so I need to make that day up so Cooper will get two nights this week and I decided to pull another Mania 2018 piece out um, because I'm trying to work on those whips, working on those whips. And I wanna share that with you. So I'm gonna add one more piece to replace the fall in my rotation. And it's in this handy dandy um, project envelope that I made for myself a couple of years ago when I first started Floss Tube and it is a, was for Valentine's. I was doing project envelope for each month. But I'm going to pick up Su the Susan Rambo sampler. My husband bought this for me year two years ago, so in 2018, and it was kitted and it was on 32 count and I remember thinking at the time really don't like 32 count. I don't, I don't stitch on it anymore, but after working on Barbara Anna and seeing how much my eyes have changed since 2018, I'm going to enjoy working on Susan Rambo on 32 count. So this is the full piece. I want to share with you where I'm at. So when you come back and visit with me this coming weekend, hopefully, excuse me, <coughs> I will have a little of something to share with you. So she's gonna be a very big girl. And here's where I am. I absolutely love those flowers in the border. Just those pops of color. I think this one is my favorite one. The red one at the bottom, kind of the center, reminds me of a fried egg. <laughs> but this is, this is, Susan Rambo, but look. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. So it's going to be an easy stitch, just easy on my eyes to give my eyes a little bit of rest because Cooper also was 40 count, so I'm looking forward to that. And it's been a while since I've worked on this, but if you take a look, where did I put the pattern? Oh my. It's right here in front of me. 
if you take a look at, well, excuse me, put it under my bag. Susan Rambo, her parents, her grandparents, and her sibling are listed in these areas. And I'm gonna change that up. It's not gonna be a true reproduction because I am going to insert my own family names in there. Um, I lost my father this year, um, and it'll be a way to kind of commemorate him and my grandson. I'm gonna add his name on here as well. Um, and I'm gonna use my maiden name when I stitched my name here instead of my married name but I will put my married information and my children and that kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I don't know when I'll get to those portions because I wanna stitch it first and then I'll finish and fill in the names, but um, that's where I'm gonna go with this one. So this will be my focus, um, my large piece, my BAP over the coming months. And several of you either purchased this or started stitching this along with me in 2019, last beginning of last year, when I really started to focus on it. So if you want to join in with me, please do. I'd appreciate the, the uh, company as I stitch this, and um, I'll look forward to it. So there's that. And I wanted to share with you as well a couple of new floss tubers to me that you may want to check out. Um, this past week, I watched the Colorado cross stitcher and she is a sampler stitcher she is also a model stitcher or was a model stitcher for the Cricut collection so she has lots of beautiful pieces that she has stitched on um, over one some samplers you might want to go check her out she's very interesting and there's also Celeste Creates um, she already has a couple of friends here on Floss Tube um, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts as well as um, Christy they are they're all friends she's a Texan she is a homeschooler she is a quilter she's made maybe three videos maybe four um, so you can easily catch up with her, but go check Celeste out, as well as Cynthia Brew, uh, Stitching in the Light. Um, I've watched her as well. She has a few tutorials. Um, we have similar stitching tastes. She's just very pleasant to listen to. So if you're looking for someone new to watch, someone new to check out, and you are not already subscribed and watching these three ladies, please step over there and just click and watch. So until next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful, stitch-filled, healthy week. Hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.